In this video, we're going to show you how we built an open source security camera using Rust, which runs on Linux. Yeah, so it's it, it does the thing, you know, you can run AV1 on a friggin Raspberry Pi right now. It's pretty cool. So these are the components for building this product. You need a Raspberry Pi. We've tested it on Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 and we know that they both work. And we'll have to see which one is better. And then you'll need some sort of webcam that's compatible with the Raspberry Pi. What's up, Bob? <laughs> Hopefully this is enough for the AV1 encoder, which is known to consume a lot more resources. You will need a USB camera an ethernet connection or Wi-Fi power adapter, micro SD memory card. For the Raspberry Pi 4, just switch the micro USB to a USB-C power adapter. So now I'll be able to see if anybody enters here. Hi, Tober. We created a Rust app, roughly has like four steps. So we have a camera thread that we use to read frames from, which then we send to the encoder thread. We're using the Ravi encoder. And which uh, which codec is that using? AV, AV1, 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 yeah. yeah. After encoding the frames, we send them to a WebSocket server, which then distributes or how you call it, it will fan out the frame, the encoded frames to all the connected clients. So for development, I recommend that you use a regular Linux computer. I do not recommend Mac OS. So first thing you want to do, you want to clone the repo, then go to the folder. Uh, and I recommend you use VS Code. You want to modify the Raspberry Pi IP that's needed so that you can access your Raspberry Pi website from other computers. Yeah, so to speed up development, we built this shell script that cross compiles Rust for the Raspberry Pi architecture. So you have to change this to be your Pi's IP address and your Pi's username. This is the target that Rust uses to compile to a ARM64. Yeah, I think that's what it is, what the Raspberry Pi uses. And we just install a couple of de dependencies. We need a lib video for Linux because that's what the application uses to pull video frames from the camera. And you have to build in release mode or else AV1 is terribly slow. It's like half a frame a second, maybe. And then I just copy, copy up the binary to the Pi. It's a pretty simple script, but this just makes it easy to do things. So I ran that and it, it uploaded it. Go over to the Pi connection and Dario wanted to test AV1. The Raspberry Pi is ready to stream. Now let's move on to the browser app. So this is roughly how the client app works. It connects to, to the WebSocket server that the Raspberry exposes. Then we use a React hook called useEffect uh, to get the new messages out of the WebSocket connection. So the, the library where, that we are using has a built-in object called last JSON object that does the parsing for you. Then we pass the decoded JSON object to the, to the video decoder. And then asynchronously, we need to wait for the decoder to decode the, the video frames. And we just send the decoded frames to the canvas as if they were regular images. We are using the Web Codex uh, framework, makes it remarkably easy to deal with um, video encoding and decoding. Here are our results. We got zero frames per second using the AV1 encoder on the Raspberry Pi 3. Around 15 frames per second using the MJPEG encoder. For the Raspberry Pi 4, up to 10 frames per second using the AV1 encoder 
and 30 frames per second using the MJPEG encoder. This is a bitrate comparison between AV1 and MJPEG. As you can see, AV1 is a lot more efficient.